Good morning everyone, it's Alps Lifey. Welcome to Real Talk. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the new Fujifilm autofocus update, which is firmware 3.0 for the Fuji X-T3. Um, what I think about it, what's what's been good about it, what's been bad about it. Um, I'm just going to go straight in as always, Real Talk, you know what it's all about. Conversation, no gimmicks, nothing else, let's go. Um, so I've been using it for um, quite a while now. Um, the update is great, the autofocus is really snappy. Let me just make sure. Yeah, it's all good. Um, so it's great and I like it and it's, it's way faster and it's much, much better than it was before. But there's one problem um, and it's... They, they said something about like what they were going to fix in this update um, and that was like the further back you are they'll be able to then track onto your face and stuff like that I'm not finding that um, I'm finding that the range in which it finds faces is pretty much about the same um, and you can't I, I don't know if it's just me or I don't know but whenever I put someone with sunglasses on or someone with a hat or something like that it seems to not work. It doesn't work. It doesn't. It doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Um, and I've used other camera systems before, um, and I know Canon does. I know Canon recognizes um, people with sunglasses on or with hats and whatever, and it works great. Um, on the Fuji side, it's just it's not snappy. It doesn't. It doesn't work as well, um, and that's a that's a disappointment. And it is a problem as well because um, the, you know there's people out there, maybe like vloggers and stuff, and some people like to wear sunglasses. If you, you you need sunglasses to be able to at least just find the face. And I get maybe because it uses the eyes to focus or whatever, but you know, give us something else. Um, I, I don't know. I think object tracking as well is a big thing as well. Um, object tracking, I don't believe there is any ob object tracking, um, which is it's kind of bad. Uh, I'm not complaining too much um, because you know the camera is great. I love the video specs, and um, for what I need to use the auto focus for, um, it's great. It works as it should. Um, there, there can be times when I get a bit frustrated when I'm out, and I'm I don't know. I, I think we, as auto focus develops, that's one stage which Fuji should um, focus on. Um, so object tracking, better sunglass tracking as well so if you're wearing sunglasses to focus on that um, but I'm pretty excited for the future updates of the Fuji camera um, we're on 3.0 right now I suspect and I don't know if I'm right here I don't know if they can introduce like anamorphic modes uh, there's a, there's a ton of things that they could do maybe there's there was talk of 240 frames per second or something like that like I said the autofocus is great it's very snappy it's good the face select thing um, it's it's good, but it, it gets you. You need to get used to it. Um, I had to assign a button on my camera to be able to then select a face because I had two faces in the frame. I tried to select one or the other using the joystick. It wouldn't work. I tried to use my finger. It wouldn't work. I had to actually assign a button to make face select, and then I could actually choose a face. Um, so they seem to like gone a little bit backwards in terms of what you how you select a face and stuff like that so it's, it's a little bit annoying um but you know every camera's got its quirks and stuff like that and i wouldn't i wouldn't like pin that against the fuji and say like you know oh because of the autofocus etc it's still a lot better than other cameras um it's probably third in the list compared to you know canon or sony and i have to admit the, the, the sony's autofocus is really good um canon's is the best um, but yeah, it, it it's it's a it's a small things that really don't matter. Um, I, I think when we talk about like the updates and uh, what these cameras can offer for the price as well, you know, it's still cheaper than um, a Sony camera, and it offers more specs as well um, internally to, for for video. I don't know about photography. I don't know, you know, what what, it, what in terms of photography what that offers you guys, but for video personally. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, for video personally, it offers me a lot. It offers me everything, almost what I need. Um, and like I've said before, there, there's minor things in there. And then obviously, there's um, the XH1 has been um, discontinued now, and only being, or I say, body only has been discontinued and is now being sold with the grip. Um, so that indicates that the XH2 is probably being in 
stages of development and coming out next year. I would guess maybe end of this year, who knows. I don't think they'd want to cannibalize the sales of the XT3. A load of people are buying the XT3 right now and it's so like, it's setting trends. You know, this is this is like when the Mark II came, 5D Mark II came out, the GH3 uh, or 4, um, the A7S, you know, this is a trend setting camera uh, right now. And it's it's so good still. Um, obviously, I feel like on some ways it's competing with the Blackmagic Pocket. Um, and in many ways, oh, and that's gonna, I'm gonna have a review on that as well. So upcoming, I've got um, a Blackmagic Pocket 4K. I'm just gonna call it the Pocket 4K because I can't keep saying the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, blah, 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 blah. It's annoying. It, just call it the Pocket 4K, done, dusted. P4K. So we're gonna do a review on that um, with the, uh, so it's gonna be an independent review and then a side-by-side -side review with the um, X-T3. Um, I already know that the Blackmagic will beat the X-T3 in image quality in terms of dynamic range, um, but you can, that's not to say the X-T3 is bad. I would probably still wanna shoot with the X-T3 99 or 95% of the time. Um, but I am excited to use the Black Magic, and you know it's new, it's new gear, it's new tech. It, it's I like the design of the camera as well. A lot of people didn't like that. Um, and for me, it's like the XC3 in the black, the, the Pocket 4K. My ideal setup was to have um, an A and B cam um, as those two, or like you know for, for certain projects. Like if I really needed the highest quality and everything, then I would definitely go with the Black Magic because that it offers much more. Um, but if I wanted you know, for general, like like I said, 90% of stuff, I would have went with the uh, X-T3, and including the autofocus as well, you're not getting that with the um, Blackmagic camera. Um, and, you know, there you have to think about what you want from a camera. So many people are like, oh, this is the best camera because it offers all these specs. Well, battery life, flip out screen, um, other features, autofocus, uh, you know, this is a hybrid camera and we, we're talking about competing with a cinema camera. Um, and I, I still think that the two tied together, it's like, it, you know, someone who's looking at maybe an A7S or whatever could realistically afford an X-T3 and a Blackmagic Pocket. Um, you could get lenses for both. So you could share a lens system with both cameras. Um, so you could get, for example, um, EF uh, cinema mount uh, lenses. So you've got the uh, Samyangs or Rokinons, whatever you, you people call them. Um, you can get SLR Magic uh, lenses, um, I believe. I don't know if you can get, can you get them in EF mount? I don't know, we'll check. And you, you know what I'm saying, like you can just, you can find a certain lens set and you can, you're able to share them with adapters. Um, so you could have two bodies and then like one set of glass. So it is possible um, to have two cameras. And I, I think, don't forget the Sony's are still 8-bit. Um, and it does matter when you start to get higher end and you start to want to get more detail, especially skin. A lot of people don't realize this. Um, when you get a higher bit rate, uh, sorry, when you get a higher bit depth camera, um, your skin details and everything, it changes a lot. It does change a lot, like the gradations in your skin, you, the more realistic you look. Um, because don't forget, if you look at your skin, it's not just like, well, I, mine's not, I, I get like blotchy, horrible skin in old age um, but so you can get like pink tones and then uh, you know yellow or white or black or brown whatever you are you can get gradations in your skin and the more bit depth that the camera offers it actually reveals more color and detail um, and so that's that's one of the things that I missed about the Magic Lantern cameras which is that you could actually get a lot of detail uh, when I say Magic Lantern sorry I meant the 5D Mark III with the Magic Lantern it was like 14-bit um, raw um, it was so, it was like photorealistic. And you know, some people might not like that. I, I do like that. When you pair that up with a soft lens, um, you can get really nice skin. Um, and that's that's something that I like as a preference. Not, not everyone's gonna like that, but I like that as a preference. Um, the other thing as well is, when we talk about the 10-bit from this camera, it's only 420. Everyone keeps saying to me, oh, it's not 422, you know. Just check up on why you need that extra two. Just check it up. Honestly, I've been I've been shooting so much with this, and it's it's been fine. I don't I really don't understand why people are like fussing over it. it it's fine. It's it's more than usable. It's perfect. Um, 
maybe in a future update they could add that 42 just to please like some of those people who are just like oh well it doesn't offer it internally but you know again this camera is so cheap the price that you're getting it for the features that you're getting it for the autofocus the, the 4k the h265 um it's just it's just crazy um so yeah back on track sorry i sidetracked <laughs> i like i could keep getting into different tech and stuff so the um the autofocus what would i like to see as i'll, I'll just brush up again the object tracking we need object tracking like it it's just a it should be a basic feature um face tracking is great also maybe animals as well i try to take pictures of my cat but you know it, it doesn't he moves too fast and i can't really capture him um and also the the whole issue of like when you when your face gets a little bit smaller it can't track it like i'd say it gets to about i don't know if this is going to be accurate on screen here but like if i so my face is like here right now but if it goes to like here it tends to not track <coughs> or doesn't find it um, sorry, got bad chest. So there's not really much for me to cover on the autofocus update. I really loved it, it was great. Um, much better than what it was before. Um, but as I said, there's still those things that bother me. The sunglassing, the, the sunglassing, sunglasses issue um, needs to be resolved. Um, how many pictures do people take with sunglasses on? Just makes face, face um, tracking useless. Um, you know, and it just, I'm sure it can't be that hard, really. Like, can it be hard? Maybe just focus on the glass or something, or like on the edge of the glass or something like that. Pick up, pick up. I don't know. I don't know how all this works, but all I know is that other companies can do it. So, let's try. Oh, and the just another little thing as well. A little rumor was that the Ronin S um, may support the XT3. Or no, they're working on it. Now this is very exciting. This means I don't have to use my Ronin S motor. Um, and it also means that you'll be able to use the, uh, how can I put it, the digital functions of the Ronin S. So via the app, you've got like uh, tracking and stuff like that and hyperlapse and all that. So it's an exciting time for X-T3 users. And, and they said, I think X-T2 as well. So I could be wrong. I believe the X-H1 might be included in that. If they didn't, it'd be a bit weird because considering that the X-H1 is more video orientated, I would have thought they went X-T3 and the X-H1, but maybe the X-T2 and X-T3 share the same sort of system or OS, I don't know. Um, but yeah, exciting times. We've been asking for it, we wanted it, and they, one of the people over at the DJI forums um, said that the engineers are working on that. So it's exciting. I'm hoping it's within the next month or two because summer's coming and I really want to shoot some really nice stuff. And that's the end of today's uh, Real Talk episode. I've been up Slifey and if you enjoyed the content, please subscribe. Check out my other videos uh, here, 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 or there, or whatever it's going to be. And I'll see you again soon. Peace out. <laughs>